Welcome to iSpa's Product Learning Lab. Owner Michael Publis joins us today to share information about Circadia's latest and greatest offerings. Michael, let's jump right in. We can't wait to hear about the offerings that you've chosen to highlight here in the iSpa Product Learning Lab. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. It's great to see you again and, and great to be participating today. I know you have a, a lot of people joining you and I'm excited to talk a little bit about some new things that we have uh, coming up and also some things that we're really starting to focus on and highlight as we see some momentum changes and some shifts uh, in the industry as far as what it is that people are really looking for. So um, yeah, very exciting. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, you, you guys always have the best innovative new ideas coming out. So I, I know this is going to be good. So I'm going to let you take it. So uh, th thank you again so much. So I decided to talk a little bit about antioxidant protection today, specifically about vitamin C. I mean, I, I'm sure as you have and many of the other people who are going to be watching today, you know, have been really deep diving deep into education, taking a look at what it is that they can do to better their own knowledge, the knowledge of their staff. So a lot of the things that we say, and I hear this a lot, you know, a lot of older technology becomes new again with a new spin, a new intro, a new, uh, a new idea, a new concept. So we started looking at some of this uh, way back in the fall when we introduced our pumpkin perfecting mask with Bacuchiol. So Bacuchiol is an ingredient that has been around for a little while, uh, almost 10 years, but in the last two years, it has kind of risen through the stratosphere as a vitamin A alternative right? Uh, vitamin A is a great ingredient, one of the tried and true ingredients that we have in our industry for treating multiple signs of aging. But for some people, it's a little aggressive. It can be over proliferative. It can uh, cause uh, purging in the skin. So some people just can't use it. So they're always looking for an alternative in the industry to help fill that need. So we came across this Bacuchiol and it, it was just, it was incredible. I was blown away by the results. And then to be able to have a seasonal launch just as people are starting to get back to, you know, some of the way things were in the fall. I know we've had a little bit of a backward step for some territory, some areas of the world, but people were excited that we were bringing a new product to, to, to launch. So we took a really close look at that and it was incredibly successful. Of course, it's pumpkin, so perfect time of the year. But then we also started looking at, well, what other things don't people know about that we consider to be this is standard information, standard knowledge? And we went back to looking at vitamin C. Everybody's talking about immunity, how to keep ourselves healthy, how to keep our immune uh, systems at their highest performing peak. And so many elements of, of the skin are involved with just overall cutaneous immune defenses. Things like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, which you know it has a depleting effect on COVID for the body. So we really started diving into all that. So when I was asked today, well, what do you really want to talk about? I, I said vitamin C. Let's go back to the basics of vitamin C because there's a lot of misinformation and things that people don't necessarily understand about uh, what it does. So a little bit about our vitamin C. People ask all the time, well, what form of vitamin C do you use and what's the percentage? And I ask them oftentimes, well, what type of product are you looking to use? Because as a manufacturer, someone that actually makes products, you know, we make everything from, uh, from scratch here, our formulation concepts, our research and development, our manufacturing, all done here in the four walls of Circadia here in Pennsylvania. So um, the question of course is not how much vitamin C, but which type of vitamin C you're using and which type of product. Uh, our most popular product, our biggest seller, is our vitamin C reversal serum. And that utilizes a form called magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. And it's, you can look at it as ascorbic acid, the form that's recognized by the body with magnesium and phosphate hooked to either end. So it makes it very stable. It makes it very gentle. And that's a, a pretty well-known and notable form of vitamin C. But we actually use five different forms throughout the product line depending on exactly what it is, the type of product that we're trying to put it in and what we want that product to do. So I've never heard someone pose the question in, in, in the way that you just posed that question about vitamin C. Um, is, 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 the, is the butriol and pumpkin a cousin of the vitamin C or is it like explain that relationship? Sure. Well, it's, it's actually the butriol is an alternative to vitamin A. Vitamin A. So, right. So then that's a really good question. And it allows me to kind of geek out a little bit about ingredients and biomarkers and 
the genetics of how, how ingredients work. Um, when you look at what vitamin A does in general, it's a cell proliferator. So it gets the epidermal cells at the surface to move to the surface faster. And a classic sign of aging is a slowing of that process. So very simply, when you apply any stable form of vitamin A, it's going to have an anti-aging effect. It helps to stimulate uh, proteins in the dermis. So it, it, it's, it's easy to identify what that does. When you look at Bacuchiol and you do a comparison of exactly how vitamin A works, it's literally mirroring all the elements that we see from vitamin A. It's not as proliferative as something like vitamin A, but it's very, very close. And, and um, you know, the, the best way to describe it is it, it shows a pattern of, of exactly where the ingredients are working and how they're penetrating into the cell, working with, uh, with the, within the DNA actually to replicate the DNA and push it faster. So it's really interesting to see that they pair up so well and so nicely. And then we're getting back to basics with the view of vitamin C and how that actually operates within the skin. And you sort of you sort of phrased it around different levels of vitamin C and how the vitamin C functions within the product. It's it, you can get that specific within Circadia in terms of how you're using that product line, that product. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So again, because vitamin C, everybody knows that vitamin C is good through the body and something that they need. I think people naturally gravitate towards vitamin C as an ingredient in professional skincare. Uh, there are statistics that show about 4% of the vitamin C that we take in orally makes it to the surface of the skin. So we can make the argument that everybody is vitamin C deficient on the surface, and it does so many great things. It, it's a skin lightener. It works as a tyrosinase inhibitor, so it helps to brighten uh, darker hyperpigmented lesions. It's the classic antioxidant, so it helps to protect against free radical damage, not just initially, but throughout the course of the time that the product is on the skin. And then it's also a critical component in making collagen, which is the most abundant and arguably the most important protein in the dermis. So those are the things that we see vitamin C doing. But again, the, the conversation about local immunity and neutralizing free radicals and keeping the skin healthy, right? If it's healthy, it's going to function better. And therefore, it's actually going to look better. But when you look at the different forms of vitamin C, it's interesting to see that some might be a little bit more effective. Um, I'll, I'll talk about something that everyone's been talking about lately, which is blue light um, radiation that we get. A lot of it comes from devices, computers, screens. We see uh, manufacturers of those devices actually putting filters on to help to dim that blue light. But we get a lot of blue light from just sun exposure. There's a lot that comes from the sun. In fact, the majority of blue light exposure comes from the sun. It's not necessarily exclusively from devices. But what we see is that there's a form of vitamin C called tetrahexadecal ascorbate, which is very effective in oil soluble products. So your night creams and your also day creams for SPF, that form of vitamin C is going to be extremely effective at helping to not just do all the great things that vitamin C already is known for, but also protecting from things like blue light. There's a lot of research that's been published lately that shows just how effective that form of vitamin C is in protecting against blue light. No idea. I yeah, have... it's, it's it's incredible. And and so, but so you say if we, if we ingest vitamin C orally, we get about four percent of vitamin C. And then if we're using products like Circadia's on the skin, what ratio of that is actually penetrating through and supplementing what we're already doing through our mouths? Right. Sure. I mean, again, a, a great question. And this actually just came up. I was um, talking with someone about, well, should I be using products that have different forms of vitamin C and layering through, throughout the course of the day? And the answer is yes. Bottom line is you can never have too much vitamin C on the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to it, there, there's, there is a deficiency uh, of vitamin C. And I'm sorry, go, go back to your initial question because I start to Do go it. in a million different directions when I can geek out with somebody about ingredients. Listen, we can do this all day. No, I was saying you had said earlier that 4% is absorbed into our system when we ingest vitamin C. And I was asking if we're using the product on the skin, what percentage is actually getting into our system, into our skin to see right. the results that you were talking and the benefits of it that you're talking about. Got it, got it. Yeah, it just, it just came to mind again. That conversation is called bioavailability. So the level of bioavailability will vary from vitamin C to vitamin C. So I mentioned magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is one that we use Again, it's ascorbic acid with those two other elements hooked to the vitamin C molecule. 
but you get a certain amount of absorption into the skin. And that again is called bioavailability. You can measure that ratio, you can measure that percentage, but oftentimes it comes down to exactly how much is in the product. Is it 10%, is it 20%, is it 30%? Other vitamin Cs, tetrahexadecalascorbate is one that I mentioned, that has a much higher level of absorption, therefore bioavailability than even magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, but it's a different form. It's gonna be oil soluble versus water soluble. And ascorbyl glucoside is another, aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate. There are so many different forms that uh, ingredient suppliers will, will create to be able to fit the needs of what that product will be, ultimately become. So I would, I would imagine much of your training with estheticians and, and massage therapists on site is understanding how this works and understanding the different vehicles through which a person can get vitamin C on their skin into their bodies. So yeah. I would a big piece of your work when you, when you go into a spa and your team goes into a spa to train. Yeah, we, we definitely have a tendency to get into the nitty gritty of ingredient performance and how ingredients work together, you know, how they're working in concert to support each other. There's a lot of, of thought that goes into that uh, and also into the training. I and mean, we're actually trying to, you know, give those therapists and estheticians the most knowledge that they can. So when their clients, when their guests are coming in to talk to them, they are armed with all of this information because we have a lot of very savvy consumers. You know, the digital era of social media, you know, where people can actually consume information, it's a lot. So you have a lot of guests that are coming in that know their stuff. So we want to make sure that those those professionals are as prepared as they can possibly be for any questions that come their way. I mean, I get questions. And I'm like, I, I don't even know. I don't know that. What, I don't even know what you're talking about. But it's good because it forces us to go back and, and do our research and, and look things up and, and expand on our own knowledge. That's amazing. And I, I think that's really a benefit of the line is that the levels of knowledge and education within the brand and the products, it's it's pretty amazing. It, it is, it is. And again, the, the conversation of vitamin C as, as long as vitamin C has been a staple ingredient in the industry, you know, it also ties into the idea of circadian rhythms and, and overall health, health of the body. And, and a lot of people don't know that circadia, circadia, means around the day and it was created based on the concept of treating skin uh, day versus evening which is based on the concept of circadian rhythms and chronobiology so we again constantly ingredient launches that are coming from you know standard suppliers in the industry we hear more and more about a focus on on circadian rhythms and the ingredients that can help to rebalance our skin's circadian rhythm because the skin has the same genes that the rest of the body does that are named after circadian rhythms, clock, period, cycle. These are all genes that are functioning and synchronizing within the skin, daytime versus night. And vitamin C, again, a very uh, you know standard ingredient plays a role in all of that. Wow. One last question before we close, Michael. It's a very important question. Why should a spa consider doing business with circadia? Well, you know, we have a laundry list of, of things that we love to, to talk about. First of all, we're an education-based company. So we like to share our knowledge and our information. Everything is made here in the United States. And we really focus a lot on performance of product, selecting and working with partners that, that we know and trust uh, when it comes to the integrity of the ingredients that ultimately make the formulations that we have. So a high level of uh, integrity when it comes to quality control, quality assurance, that's important. We have an incredible customer service team. The customer is, you know, is always number one. And we also want to make sure that we're providing the best possible products for the end user to keep their skin looking and functioning at its best. Because if we can do that, they're going to have healthy skin, but skin that also looks great. That's awesome. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. You all be sure to explore Circadia's product learning lab profile to learn more about their amazing brand and to access their contact information. Thanks again, Michael. Thanks so much, Patrick. We appreciate it. It's great to see you again. You too, you too.